In previous videos, I've given examples of what might amount to a good reason as a defense for having a knife or an article with a blade or a point in a public place without lawful authority. The most prominent defenses might be where you are using it for work or you have it on your possession for religious reasons or some kind of national costume. But what if you think you have a good reason, but it doesn't fall into one of these obvious categories and it is a knife or some other article that does not fall within the exemption of a folding pocket knife? which by way of a refresh is a blade no longer than three inches. It does not lock. It does not have any words indicating harm on it. And it is immediately foldable at all times. If you are being charged with an offence under Section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988, and you think you have a good reason for having this with you in a public place, and you put this forward as your defence, I warned in a previous video that this will be vigorously tested by the prosecution. But it turns out it might not just be the prosecution that tests your good reason. And that is what I'm talking about today. But if you're new to me and my channel, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, then you'll receive notifications of new videos. And if you've got questions of your own, I answer those in my segment questions in the comments over at Black Belt Secrets, my sister channel linked in the description below. And if you want to reach out to me directly, follow me on Instagram as that's the quickest way. And the case I'm talking about today is Crown Against Bound of 2003, where the defendant was convicted for having with him a folding lock knife, contrary to section 139. Now this case was particularly interesting because the defendant had a rather unusual reason put forward as what he called a good reason for having this knife with him in a public place. On the 19th of September in 2001, the defendant was stopped and searched by a police officer at 6.20 in the evening and he was found to have a folded lock knife in his trouser pocket. He stated in interview that he had been depressed and had a propensity for self-harm and this was the reason that he had the knife with him. This wasn't in dispute by the prosecution or the defense. In fact, this was put forward to the court as an agreed fact. During the interview, he accepted that he had this knife with him in a public place. He accepted that it was a prohibited knife for the purposes of the act. And he also accepted that he had no other lawful authority for carrying it. At trial, he continued the argument that he had a propensity for self-harm and that this amounted to a good reason for having this knife with him in a public place. Whereas the Crown, of course, disagreed and contended that this did not amount to a good reason for carrying the knife. There were both psychiatric and medical reports that confirmed that the defendant had a history of depression and a propensity to self-harm. But the important point of the case is this. The defense submitted that whether or not this was a good reason was a question of fact that ought to be left to the jury. In other words, the defense was saying that the jury should determine whether or not this was a good reason and that there should be no intervention from the judge on this specific point. Because after all, if this did amount to a good reason, then it amounted to a defense and he would have been found not guilty. Even the Crown Prosecutor agreed that this was a matter left to be decided by the jury and a number of different authorities were presented to the judge by counsel. The judge, however, took a slightly different view and said that the court had a duty to determine whether or not the good reason put forward was capable of amounting to a good reason as a matter of law. In doing so, the judge also emphasized that a reason put forward for carrying a knife was distinct from a good reason. The judge ultimately ruled on this issue, making two points. Firstly, that a person cutting himself with a knife was so remote from carrying the knife in a public place that it could not amount to a good reason as a matter of law. Secondly, that a jury properly directed could not reasonably come to the conclusion that the explanation advanced by the defendant amounted to a good reason. And in making such a ruling on this issue, the judge removed this from consideration from the jury. In other words, the jury no longer had to decide whether or not this defense put forward amounted to a good reason. And accordingly, with no valid defense for the jury to consider, the judge directed the jury to return a verdict of guilty. Having been convicted, the defendant appealed to the Court of Appeal, Criminal Division, again saying that the issue should have been put to the jury to decide whether or not he had a good reason. However, the appeal was dismissed and emphasizes many of the points that I've made in my previous videos. The court said it is important to distinguish between deciding whether or not a reason is a good reason, which is indeed a matter for the jury, and whether a reason is capable of being a good reason in the first place. Examples given and contrasted by the court included that no one would suggest that having a knife in a public place for the purposes of committing a criminal offence should amount to a good reason. Similarly, simply forgetting that you had this knife with you in a public place 
may amount to an explanation, but cannot amount to a good reason. The court also made reference to the lack of evidence put forward in the instant case, without which a jury could not determine whether it was a good reason in any event. So as I said in my previous videos, there is a defense of good reason in section 139 to have a bladed or pointed article in a public place, but you must expect this to come under scrutiny, not just by the police, not just by the CPS, even when it gets to court, even if the prosecuting barrister agrees with defence counsel that this matter should be put to the jury, this case illustrates that this issue can very well be decided by the judge as to whether or not your reason put forward can, as a matter of law, amount to a good reason. And if not, it may be withdrawn from consideration from the jury and not amount to a defence at all. So I hope you found that case summary interesting. I certainly find them interesting to read and apply to different cases as we do on a daily basis in legal practice. And if you do enjoy these case summaries, let me know which issues you'd like me to look at in case law below, and I'll do some summaries of those as well. In the meantime, thank you for watching, stay humble and subscribe.